talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, what makes a harmonica play well. This is an out-of-the-box uh, harmonica. First thing you can do, uh, check the tuning. That's very easy. It's very easy to check. You just play the octaves all the way up on the blow and the draw. That one's a bit off. The three, um, the the three seven is a bit off. So about half of those octaves are need a little bit of tweaking. The five nine is. Anyway, that's something you can measure, right? And you can correct. It's 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 very easy when you can measure something uh, to correct it. You you measure, you affect change, and you you measure again. Uh, so the other thing uh, I want to talk about. Well, the the important thing is read shape. How that impacts how the harmonica plays. Now, there's this great article. In this article, Benson and Antaki make detailed measurements uh, of how the reeds work while you play the harmonica. And, and, uh, and Antaki from 97, is it 97, 98? In the uh, uh, Journal of the Acoustical Society of America. Uh, so, Acoustical and Physical Dynamics of the Diatonic Harmonica. There's a great graph in here that uh, basically he looks at the amplitude so how much the reed vibrates, how hard it vibrates, as you bend the note. So he has the draw reed here and the blow reed here. And we're assuming that there's a linear progression. And I don't know, when you bend a note, you create a, uh, uh, an air pocket in your mouth that, that creates resonance. There's a resonance cavity. And as you... Uh, increase the size of that, you increase the bend. Now I don't know if there's a linear increase in the size. I don't know if there's a constant uh, uh, flow. That's not, that's not specified here. But I can assume that as, as in most situations the player was making constant adjustments to their embouchure, to their resonance chamber, and to the amount of flow they're drawing in to try to keep the tone constant. You kept keep full power. This is a C harmonica, the three-hole bend. I, I assume it's a well-playing golden melody harmonica. Uh, the three-hole bend on a C, you can achieve a virtually seamless bend from the pitch, from from the from the the primary note down to the 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 the, the, the three half-step bends that you can get. Um, but despite that. If you look at the amplitude, if you add up, the, because as you bend from the draw, as you start, the pitch starts to go down, the draw reed uh, starts to work less and the blow reed starts to work more. Okay, uh, But if you look here, somewhere in the middle, when you add up the blow reed of both reeds, it doesn't come up to what full power was at the beginning. So there's some power loss as you bend down in the harmonica. And so this is a graphical representation of that on a C harmonica, fairly seamless. When you get to lower keys, you see what happened there? I'm bending. Sorry, I moved a little bit there, but there's this really big um, weak spot, blind spot, or what you have it. It's a spot where I don't know if the the draw reads doing the work or the blow reads doing the work, but they should both be doing some work, but they're not. Do this happens when the bend is being handed off from the draw read to the blow read, and somewhere in the middle, uh, if you add the amplitude of the draw read plus the blow read, the the total is still less than the amplitude of either the draw reed before you went deeper into the bend or of the blow reed when you're really at the end of that bend. So what we usually do subconsciously 
is we increase the, the flow. We, we draw a little harder. Uh, or we increase the resonance cavity size in our mouth a little bit quicker to, to skip over that so that we can see I'm working really hard and there still is a little bit of a jump there so can we actually fix that yes yes you can because if you have If you have a well-playing harmonica, one where the reeds have been adjusted, you can you can address that. You can get full power from all, you know from all in all the pitches uh, on the three draw bend. And I picked the three draw bend because I could talk about overblows, but really not everybody plays overblows. But the three draw bend on the diatonic harmonica is a very important note. I think that that's when you make that note sound good. That's the reason why people want to play the diatonic harmonica instead of the chromatic harmonica. So why not make that note just uh, come alive and sound really good? So how do you adjust a reed? Well, uh, I like to look at the reed from the side view. I like to create a little shadow. You can't see that, but I like to look at the reed, uh, look at light bouncing from a piece of paper and look through the reed. And let's take a look at this one of these reeds in particular. Let me adjust my camera so I can see best. So right now I'm looking through the slot. And I don't know if you can see what I can see, but there is light. There's always light that shines through here. The light doesn't go away as I as this reed passes through the slot. Okay? And what does that mean? Well, if I play the note, I feel a little bit of a hesitation as I, I put my lips over this. I'm drawing in and I'm blowing out. And I can have a good idea of how the note feels in my mouth as I'm playing it, uh, and how quickly it comes in, how much delay there is. So I'm going to adjust the shape of that reed. Well, that, yeah, another quick thing is if I bend the note, it squeals. Okay? How easy it is to get a single reed to squeal is fairly straightforward to measure. A single reed squealing is a, a problem for bends and overbends, but in of itself that that measurement can clue you into a reed that's not efficiently shaped and you have airflow where you don't want to have airflow. I'm going to adjust uh, the shape of this reed to try to get rid of that squeal and to try to make it sound nice and fat I don't know if you can hear the difference when you plink, I can hear it here immediately, that it has a little bit more sustain and it's a little bit deeper. And as I'm playing it, my lips are vibrating now and they, they weren't vibrating before. So there's more power. This note has more power. Now what's the ideal shape? Well, that's a great question. I like to think of it as trying to find that sweet spot, the G spot, or the H spot, harmonica spot, if you want to call it that. But the shape, 
when you've adjusted the reed, and now let's take a look. This reed now, as I push it through the slot, you see that it passes through the slot almost all at the same time. There's only a little sp space here at the back. There's only a little bit of light here at the back that never disappears, but the reed disappears, the light disappears all at the same time. So let's take a look now at how it... It comes in easier. It sounds better to my ears. My lips vibrate, my whole, my whole oral cavity vibrates. Now let's bend it and see what happens. The reed just sits there. It doesn't squeal anymore. Yep, yeah, so um, that's some of the measurable benefits to adjusting the reed shape to get your harmonica to play better. Thanks for watching.